It's Friday, May 31, and this is your Bobby the City Evening News Update. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Thanks for joining us. We get started with news that another 50 transport board workers parted ways with the company today as restructuring efforts continue. Acting General Manager Felicia Sue told Bobby this today, most of the workers were bus drivers who accepted voluntary separation packages. Back in March, 85 workers, some of whom opted for early retirement and voluntary separation, left the company. The Transport Board has been seeking to reduce its staff from 560 workers to 300 in a bid to cut costs and become a more viable entity. Barbados has to step up its action to ensure its anti-money laundering measures are up to mark. So says Deputy Director of the Central Bank's Bank Supervision Department, Jennifer Clark Murrell. Speaking at the ACAM's Anti-Financial Crime Symposium at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Center this morning, she explained that in the last mutual evaluation process, Barbados scored more than 50% in the area of technical compliance, but the country came up short in key areas. Additionally, Clark Mural revealed that in the assessment released in 2018, which compared the country's anti-money laundering protocols against the 40 recommendations of the Financial Action Task Force, Barbados did not fare too well as it relates to effectiveness. That process involved several questionnaires looking at the effectiveness with respect to technical compliance, as well as the effectiveness in terms of how we rolled out our program with respect to AML-CFT. In December 2017, we also had an on-site visit by the assessors to basically answer several questions of the competent authorities, and they also answered several questions of the financial institutions that represent our sector. And then the issuance of the report came in February 2018. So as you can see here, Barbados would have scored low effectiveness and moderate effectiveness in all 11 of the effectiveness ratings of the standard. With respect to technical complaints, we did a little better we would have gotten 25 compliant or largely compliant, and then we would have gotten 15 um, partially compliant or not compliant at all. In other news, the Senate debated the data protection bill today as government moves to put measures in place to police the personal data of Barbadians. Minister of Innovation, Science and Smart Technology, Senator Kay McCorney, told the upper chamber there are consequences for non-compliance behavior outlined in the bill. You can get some fines anywhere from $1 to $50, 50000 If, however, people sell your data or even offer to sell data, $100,000 summary conviction. Three years in jail or both. And I mentioned earlier that if when you make a query or there has been an enforcement order or, 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 or some um, attempt to deal with compliance from the data protection commissioner and people then come in and lie or they make false statements, that attracts the highest penalty. $500,000, half a million. Churches must not take their security for granted. Executive Director of the Caribbean Association of Security Professionals, Oral Reed, issued the caution last evening as he participated in a panel discussion exploring whether churches should hire professional security in light of the rise in violent attacks. The discussion was hosted by the Cave Hill Wesleyan Holiness Church as part of its Man Talk series. Reed said while the type of violent crimes targeting religious groups overseas is unlikely to occur here, churches must, however, remain mindful. If you have this um, high-level security and you have 
men walking along with, 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 with guns and their hips and that kind of thing, you know, like, like a military base, I, I, can, I can see, the, I, I can see the, 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 the sense of tension. But on the other hand, um, we, we, have, we have persons in there who are more so subversive, you know, in, 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 the, in, the, in the operations. I think that kind of operation will make people a lot more comfortable if they know that there are persons over there who may not be, say, like, uh, military, so to speak, but there's that sense of training which keeps people with that sense of confidence. I think that will make people a lot more comfortable. At the same time, Secretary of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the West Indies, Selwyn Brathwaite, said Barbadians ought to be concerned when traditional Christian principles are under attack. Some people come and drink wine and they take the bread that is to be used for sacraments. Some people go for items that they think um, would fetch or would get some value in the marketplace. And we find things like that happening. People come into church and they sleep in the churches. Those are the kinds of things that we have had. But we have to be mindful that despite this is what currently exists, that just as we care for our homes and our businesses, that the church as a place which traditionally is seen as a place of divine worship will still need to have some measure of security associated with it. In sports, the West Indies produced a blistering bowling display to crush Pakistan by seven wickets as they began their World Cup campaign with an emphatic victory at Trench Bridge. The two-time champions bowled Pakistan out for just 105 in 21.4 overs, their second lowest total in World Cup history. Here are the highlights. That's why they put the square leg back for Packers and Iron, but it doesn't matter. Inga goes up, one down. Got him. He is sharper than you think, Andre Russell. Oh, look at that ball. Has he done it again? He has. It's edged. It's flown. Well, the catches in this World Cup to start things off have been brilliant. And the shout of catch it as well. What's it come off? The clear spike when the ball is uh, next to the glove. You need to reverse your decision. You're on screen now. Make the signal. Goes short. It's in the air. Chris Gale moves like a cat around the slips. Pitches it up, it's been short all day, and the, finally the full-length delivery. Should be another one, Sheldon Cottrell will take this comfortably. That's gone, will do the distance, smacked it, absolutely nailed it this time. That's gone, in the air, and six again. Hafiz, can he get there? Can he catch this? It's taken. Taken. Heaving and power batting from Chris Gale. He's dominated proceedings. He's gone to 50. Top edge with a fielder underneath. Got a wicket he has. He deserves it. He's got a third. And that's a good thump down the ground. What about that? That will be the end of the game. A resounding blow by a hugely talented Nicholas Buran. Captain Jason Holder was happy with his side's performance. Yeah, really good start from the boys. You know, um, I thought we bowled really well. You know, we got new ball wickets, and you know, we really set them back up front. You know, which slowed their momentum. And you know, quite fortunate for us, we were able to keep picking wickets up. And you know, they never recovered from the position that they were in at the very beginning. Um, I think when we batted, you know, it was a clinical performance as well. Obviously started nicely by Chris, you know, he, he put the accelerator on him and, you know, well supported by Puran and the very end. There's regional and international news after this short break.
to regional developments now in Jamaica. Fly Jamaica workers are crying out for help. Since the airline was grounded back in March, workers have been left empty-handed by the carrier, and they are begging the government to intervene. More in this report from Television Jamaica. While the future of problem-plagued Fly Jamaica Airways seems dim, the former workers say their lives are currently in shambles. After several months without pay and a general announcement of redundancies in March, they say they have been left in limbo. To date, we have not received a redundancy letter from the company giving us the indication as to what we are entitled to. Nothing. Nothing has been said to us in terms of what is owed to us and where we're going. The workers, who did not want to be identified, said that also means no salaries for up to seven months for some. And on the international scene, Mexico's president and a top U.S. business lobbying group called on President Donald Trump to back down from a threat to impose punitive tariffs on Mexican imports in a dispute over migration. White House correspondent Jeff Mason. I don't think the White House is surprised, and I don't think the White House honestly really cares. I think the president made his decision about these tariffs because he's very disturbed and upset about the number of migrants crossing the U.S.-Mexico border. Provocación. Mexican President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador urged Trump to back down Friday after firing off a blistering letter accusing Trump of, quote, turning the United States into a bolted space where they're stigmatizing mistreatment, abuse, persecution, and a denial of the right to justice to those who seek to live free from misery. And that's news. But for the very latest, visit our website at www.popularstudy.pb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, or sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on ISOB Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good evening.